The Her Sports Show, live every Wednesday on YouTube and every podcast app. Hello and welcome to The Her Sports Show. It's cold out there, but there's been a lot of action going on this weekend. I am joined by Chantal. So Chantal, we finally got you in front of the camera. <laughs> finally, yeah. <laughs> so Delighted to be here. <laughs> there's a, a lot of a lot of action going on. So um, I think first up is the um, Spire European Cross Country Championships. Um, there were some really really good results, and the Irish senior team uh, claimed bronze in the in the team event. That was on uh, in Italy, and twins Eilish and Roisin Flanagan took 11th and 12th place respectively. And uh, Mary Mulher finished in twenty uh, seventh and, and counted uh, the third person for the team. Then Anne Marie Glynn um, finished in thirty first, followed by Ava Richardson in forty sixth and Michelle Finn in fifty fifth. So it's the fifth time in eleven years that the senior uh, women's team has medaled at these championships, which is unbelievable. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see, isn't it? Yeah, it's really really good. And um, so there was high hopes for Sarah Healy in the under twenty threes, is there? Yeah, so in relation to um, Sarah Healy, like it was, it was an unfortunate um, event for her. Really, she started off really, really well uh, in the under twenty three category, and um, was up there in contention. She finished fifth in this event last year, so definitely would have been looking to finish that, that on the podium. Um, but she pulled out in the last lap, so it's a suspected injury. She's, uh, I believe, getting X rays and, and everything checked out and stuff at the moment, just to to make sure okay. and, and and see what's going on. But definitely disappointing for her. Um, as she was like in contention she obviously won the national cross country championships there a couple of weeks back so fingers crossed she's doing okay um, and, and is back in good form but um, it was really impressive I think the, the senior team's performance um, you know the, the twins were about 28th and 29th um, about halfway through the race and um, I think we weren't really sure to uh, you know how the team would perform overall um at this event you know Fanula McCormick wasn't in it um, and yeah. she has you know been really really strong at cross country before Kira McGean obviously was supposed to run and then um was sick so she had to had to pull out um Eilers was actually the, Kira's replacement and she was top finisher and she was actually second finisher behind Kira last year so I'm not really sure how the selection pro- process works um I know some of them are, are chosen at the national um national cross country championships and um the twins weren't in action there um but yeah great to see uh, the Eilish and Roisin compete um, and, and move up through that field like as you could see Eilish push on at, at, at one point and, and move her way through the pack and, and then uh, Roisin subsequently followed um, it was a little bit closer towards the finish line but great to see them uh, get in um, finish in, in 11th and 12th uh, yeah. position for that so and it, um, it just shows you like the strength of the team that's there mm-hmm. and the strength of the athletes that we have at the moment because like Fanula and Kira weren't there yeah. and then the rest of the girls for them to come up and yeah. make their mark it's, it's great to see yeah no it is like it's, it's good to see like um, I think Fanula is about 37 so to see young athletes come through is, is really promising and um, I think one of the most excited was Anne-Marie McGlynn getting getting the result um, you know she's came fourth in in double marathon fourth in uh, national cross country so she was thrilled that the that the team uh, landed on the podium but it was a really really tough course um a really steep hill completely different to what dublin was last year and uh, so it was was uh, definitely tough i know um ava richardson was a little bit disappointed she finished 23rd last year and, and and was 46 this year but she'll definitely be back stronger um you know again next time she's racing but um, in terms of some of the junior uh, results, Jane Buckley she finished fifth in the in the women's under twenty race, so this this was a really strong performance. Uh, we were supposed to have the rugby last weekend. Tell us what happened. Yeah, so there was obviously the weather. A lot of events were cancelled, so um, the rugby was postponed. The AIL Energy final last uh, Friday evening. Um, but we'll look first of all at the at Wicklow. So Wickley, Wicklow Rugby Club claimed its first national trophy on Sunday after defeating Galwegians 2017 mm-hmm. in the conference final. Um, and this is Wicklow's second year in the AIL. And last year they actually finished; at, at they were bottom of the table. So it's unbelievable mm-hmm. to see how how much they've progressed. Um, and then in terms of like standout performances, Nisha O'Reilly's try uh, for Wicklow at the hour mark uh, proved crucial. Um, to Wicklow's success. Also scoring for Wicklow were Megan uh, Parkinson, Sarah Gleeson and Beth Roberts with um, Elizabeth McNicholas, Grace Brown Moran and Nicola Foley uh, making their mark for Galwegians too. Yeah, it's really strong and um, you know we've obviously gotten to know the Wicklow team a little bit this year with the you know mini doc that we did with them. Yeah. Um, it'd be really interesting to watch them over over the next uh, couple of years as they progress because it, it seems like that kind of strength and, and depth is is coming through. Um, so in terms of the the action, it's it's uh, going to kick off the uh, final um, in Energia Park. 
um, on Saturday and it's going to be at 2pm and it will be back on TG Cahar. I know there were a lot of people worried that uh, it might yeah. it mightn't be on the television for those that can't make the match itself. But uh, did you catch any of the rugby sevens? Yeah, so it was a really competitive weekend. Um, tell us more about it. Yeah, so um, Ireland lost out um, on a bronze medal, unfortunately, to the US um, in the HSBC uh, Cape Town Sevens. Um, but they climbed one place in the world rankings, which is great. Uh, so they're now up in fifth. So it means if they maintain this ranking, uh, they'll automatically qualify for 2024 um, Olympics. Um, France are currently in fourth place, but uh, that's an already qualified spot because they're the host nation. So that won't take up a, won't take up a slot. Okay, great. And how did their matches go then? Yeah, so I, I thought the New Zealand performance was a uh, strong, like a valiant effort. Um, the final result was 14-7 to New Zealand, but um, the ball did get into the hands of Amy Lee Murphy Crow and, and she got a score on the board for Ireland. Um, it was always going to be a tough match going into, you know, New Zealand are a really, really strong team. Um, I think it's just, um, you know, getting that kind of composure experience and, and just continuing to like build when they come up against them, it, they're they're always going to be strong, and I suppose it's about you know learning um you know where you can exploit some of their weaknesses. Um, Lucy Mulhall was sent off at like fifty seconds to go, um so she was sin binned as the rest of them were were left to continue. And what I thought was just really good was that they they did actually defend and they didn't let any more scores um you know get out, get across the line. So um look we on to the next one. Uh, they're continuing to I think evolve as a team. Um, Amy Lee Murphy Crow was joint. Uh, Try, top try scorer um, with seven tries so uh, really strong from her and in terms of the Gaelic football club championships what's going on over there? Yeah so lots <laughs> going on so defending champions uh, Kilcair and Clonburn mm -hmm. Galway club um, once again won the All-Ireland Senior Club Championship in mm -hmm. a 13 points to 7 point win over Dunamoyne on Saturday and it was the first time that the final was actually played in Crow Park which is incredible to see um, and on the winning side, so Olivia Dively and Chloe Miskell gave great performances and uh, they kicked five points and four points respectively, the two of them. And how did the intermediate club final go? Yeah, so Longford Slashers uh, defeated Mulnahone 4-11 uh, to 2-8 um, in the intermediate final and they that was also played in Crow Park. And uh, two of the Slashers goals, um, two of their four goals uh, were thanks to Grace Shannon. And then in the Junior Club Championship final between Nava Bon and Salt Hill Notcara, another Galway club, um, was postponed uh, due to the weather. But uh, it's been rescheduled to 1pm on the 17th um, at Kilmallock GA. And you have some updates for us in relation to the FIFA World Cup, something everyone's looking forward to. Yeah, so um, Brisbane has been confirmed as the Republic of Ireland Women's National Team's base camp for mm -hmm. the World Cup in 2020. Th three and uh, Vera Pau, the manager, um, welcomed the announcement, of course, and saying that Brisbane was the management management team's first choice. Mm -hmm. um, the twenty twenty three World Cup is the first one for the Art women's national team, um, the first time they've qualified for it, and the team is now ranked twenty third in the world. Um, in their highest ever ranking, so we're living in historic times. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely something that people are gonna, you know experience more and more excitement as as we um you know get more details you know coming closer to the championships in terms of um there's been a uefa draw made for the under 19s and the under 17s um in the uefa uh championship elite round qualifiers so uh tom moans under 19s are in group five and they'll face slovakia estonia and greece uh, in the qualifiers hosted by ireland and then the under 17s will meet italy ukraine and cyprus in group six with games hosted in cyprus and then a uh, US basketball star has been released from Russian custody uh, in a prisoner swap for international arms dealer uh, Victor Bout, um, who has who had been held in an American prison for 12 years. So um, Griner is reportedly back home and in good health. So that's some good news there. And then in relation to swimming, so the Swim Ireland's 2022 Irish National uh, Winter Championships, formerly known as the Irish National Short Course Championships, uh, will run from Thursday 15th until Saturday 17th um, of December in the National Aquatic Centre. So there's almost 500 swimmers from 90 clubs and teams, both Irish and overseas, are set to compete, including um, Ellen Walsh will be back in action for the first time in 12 months. We'll see Danielle Hill, Ellen Keane, Nicole Turner, Victoria Patterson, uh, to name a few. So there'll be lots of um, the Irish stars there, as well as uh, some others that will be you know, looking to get up and, and to compete with the best. Um, the full event is going to be streamed live on the Swim Ireland uh, YouTube channel, and that's part of the uh, Sport Ireland Women uh, in Sport um, you know, grant that, that we availed of when we streamed uh, Earnhead. Um, heats will start at 9.30 and the finals will be at 5pm. So 
We caught up with ESB coach and former ESB and UCD swimmer India McGlynn. So India would have swam at elite level and she is going to talk us through uh, some of the previews and what to expect uh, from the championships this weekend. So hi India, it's great to have you on the Her Sports show. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. So you are coaching with ESB um, you are also a former swimmer and then this weekend you're going to be taking on some of the commentary um, at the Irish National Winter Championships. I am indeed and I'm very excited to um, kind of jump back into the swimming world I guess so I have been a coach for a while but um, to actually I guess jump back into that national competition is going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to some racing. And is this the first time that you've done commentary on something before? It is, yes. Now, um, in all my professions, I do have to do a lot of talking and I know I can talk for Ireland and I can talk for <laughs> Um, But yeah, it's the first time I've done any sort of commentary. So um, it should be interesting. It's with David Thompson and John Kenny. Um, so John Kenny from RT and then David Thompson, obviously, um, that international summer for Ireland as well. Um, so I think we've got a good mix. Um, I think because David's doing a lot of um, like skill workshops and stuff like that now. So he'll be very knowledgeable when it comes to technique and stuff in the pool. Um, and then having John as that professional as well, he'll definitely guide us in the commentary hopefully yeah and what have we kind of got in store this weekend I know there's a lot of uh, the international athletes are going to be racing which is great um you know it's kind of been a funny I suppose last two years um you know with COVID I know like Olympic trials uh you know was tough with you know very very few people able to even attend and, and, and get that racing environment so it's great to have um I suppose some of the you know national swimmers and international swimmers all competing together and um should make for an exciting event no, absolutely. So um, it's kind of the first event where we've been able to definitely increase the number that we have there. So we have 500 swimmers coming in from about 90 different clubs, um, mm -hmm. which is very exciting. So yeah, some um, Irish clubs, obviously, and then we also have some um, international clubs coming in too. And um, so we've got obviously our Olympians coming in. So we've got like Shane Ryan, Derek Green, Daniel Whiffin, and then we've also got um, Danielle Hill and Ellen, Ellen Walsh is actually returning to the pool um, for the first time mm -hmm. since I think last December. Um, so it'll be exciting to see how she swims. Um, but we've we've been watching them kind of come through so they've just come we've had a team go to the US Open and um, to the Rotterdam International mm -hmm. and we also had a team go over to Flagstaff there in Arizona and um, for altitude training um, and everyone's obviously been producing very very good results particularly with those two competitions so we should be in for some exciting swims as well this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, it's great to obviously bring that competition back onto, onto home soil, um, you know, for, for others to aspire, you know, to be the next Danielle Hill or, or Alan Walsh and, and Serena and also to, to try and compete with them. Absolutely. Um, because you're seeing the, the like the juniors come through now as well. Like obviously we mm -hmm. had um Grace Davison um from Ards. She is um she just came back from the US Open too. Um, but before that she was at the Ulster Short Course Championships and she broke two Irish junior records. So even having kind of the juniors looking up to the seniors, but they're also still smashing records themselves, it's absolutely amazing. And with that US Open as well, we had the, mm -hmm. the team come second overall, um, and we had the women's team come second overall in that team competition too. So Ireland's really putting themselves um on the benchmark kind of when it comes to like world standards and stuff so it'll be nice to see how we compete against each other now with the Irish Open Nationals. Yeah no it was a, that was a really really good competition and, and Danielle was was in an action there and um, we had Molly Main and Victoria Catterson and a couple of the others that were competing so um, showing good form. Um, what are some of the, the races that you uh, would advise people not to miss? I know there's a live stream so people can tune in or they can head down to the Aquatic Centre um, and you know, watch the event but what are what are some of the top ones to tune in for? Um, so we've got some really exciting races coming up and um, so obviously you kind of mentioned some of the girls there they came from the US Open we had a great girls team come back and um, so that 100 meter freestyle where we have Danielle Hill Victoria Carson Erin Reardon and um, that's going to be like a really close 100 front call at this but look, sorry same with the 50 front call as well and um, they're always really really exciting particularly mm -hmm. in a short course pool like people kind of forget how much faster the short course um, events are and um, it is a little bit more technical because obviously you have more turns and stuff so kind of just like those small technical things can change your race so like like you can literally have like a, a leader there um, and then turning onto the 325, 425, if they miss the turn, get one wrong kick or something and um, the race can completely change. So they are very exciting. Um, I love the fact that we have the 4x50 relays coming up as well. Um, they're always like really exciting. You don't get 4x50 in every event anymore. So having that short course is going to be really exciting too. Um, I know UCD still hold one of the records, which is nice. <laughs> but it would be nice to see it actually broken, to be honest. I love to see, obviously, progression in the pool too. But yeah, like other races that we have as well, we've got the 100 breaststroke between like Neve Coyne and Molly Main. Mm -hmm. um, particularly, that would be a really interesting um, race to see. We haven't got Mona McSharry. I, I didn't see her on the start list coming up into this um, event, but uh, still Neve 
Quinn and Molly Main coming in. Um, and then obviously me being a butterfly myself as well, I'll be really excited to see the 50 fly between Ellen Walsh and Cora Rooney too. And um, they're very close together there on the 50 fly. So that was my event. So that's something that I'll be really interested in watching too. And what are, like, you know, we're talking about some of the names that people might be familiar with already. Like, who are some of the young athletes that we should be, we should be looking out for? I know Molly Main is still really, really young. We have heard yeah. her name um, a little bit over the last couple of years. But are, are there any any people that have impressed you, I suppose, recently um, at some competitions or even anyone from from coaching in ESB that you've seen that stood out um, maybe from from the from the younger side of things? Absolutely. So we've got um, Grace Davidson that I mentioned before. So mm-hmm. she is coming from Ards. Um, so I think she's only 17 now, but break, oh, sorry, she's younger than I think she's 16. Um, so breaking those two um, junior records um, was absolutely mm-hmm. incredible. Um, we've also got the likes of, so I actually worked with this girl. Um, she was, she's a little bit older, but she's in UCD at the moment, um, Jenna McDougall. So I was mm-hmm. working with her technique with Earl McCarthy there um, back in March. And just seeing her progress in strength over the past even six months um, is absolutely incredible. So I'm really looking forward to watching her race, probably because it is just a little bit more personal. I did work with her. So, but yeah, she's going now into the 50 meter back. I think she's going first into the 50 meter back. So I'll be looking forward to seeing her race. Um, and then other names, um, yeah, Victoria Catterson as well. So we have um, Ellen Keynes on the start list as well. And I think Roshi Nureen. Um, it's great to have, uh, you know, some of our international para athletes competing. They've obviously been doing unbelievable things um, on the international stage. Great to see them back on home ground as well. Yeah, so we've got um, our silver medalist, Alan Keane. She was also just um, voted Swim Ireland's Paris Swimmer of the Year as well. So it'll be very excited to see her coming back into the pool. I think she's actually in quite a few events. Um, and then we've also got our world medalist, um, Nicole Turner and Roshi Nureen too. Um, so we'll be very excited to see how they get on in the competition as well. Mm. Yeah, it's certainly been great. Like I know um, the two of us are only a year over older than Ellen. So we've been, been watching her compete since she was about, you know, 11 or 12. But like certainly been watching that journey that Nicole has been on. Like that's been, you know, something else. And then Roshi Nureen was so impressive in, in the Paralympics. So it, it'll be exciting to see where they're at. Absolutely. Yeah. So I feel like it's going to be some fast moving from them. Like I honestly, especially over the past year, even kind of just seeing their progression. So obviously they had to have that break during COVID too. Um, mm-hmm. But even, I don't know, just their their mindset, their competitive edge coming back into the pool. And um, like, God, talking to Ellen Keane on like sometimes like just her mindset is a different level to, to loads of mm-hmm. swimmers. So yeah, it'd be excited to see her swimming. And then in terms of, you mentioned that it's a, a short course uh, pool. So for um, people that maybe don't know the difference between short course and long course, and um, will you talk to us a little bit about that and, and give a bit of an insight into what it is? Absolutely. So a short course pool is 25 meters um, and then the long course pool is 50 meters. So that'd be Olympic size pool. Um, so obviously with um, the longer events, you're going to be you know, a lot more tumble trains. It is a lot more technical and those shorter races you're going to notice again those small technical things are going to be what changes the race so um swimming underwater so whoever pretty pretty much has like a great dive a great underwater and a great breakout and um, that's where the 50 meters and the 100 meters are most likely going to be won particularly with the extra couple of turns and um, so that's the main difference really and um, the longer distance I guess you just get dizzy really to be honest you're doing a ridiculous amount of tumble turns <laughs> the 1500 I was never really a big fan of them myself um but again yeah like it's it's really more down to to technical things so i'll be up in the commentary and i'll definitely be recording people's start times people's breakout to 15 meters um and you'll definitely notice kind of whoever has that fastest underwater and fastest like breakout and things um are most likely going to to tip those races so it'll be interesting to watch absolutely and then um as a as a coach in esb like what are some of the things that you have seen um i suppose over the last two years like we know in a couple of sports we've seen that um you know people have dropped out or, or have left the sport and, and it's trying to get some back in um it's it's tough to it's tough to retain athletes in swimming and uh, when they kind of get to that 16 17 18 um you know age bracket anyway um how has that been um i suppose as a coach and, and as a club um, so yeah, it was difficult enough, obviously, because swimming, it's still an individual sport, um, mm-hmm. but you're training as a team. So having everyone in lockdown and not um, training as a team, uh, it was quite difficult to keep got that kind of community spirit going. So we did a lot of our Zoom sessions and um, it kind of did prove that as well, like kind of keep, keeping strength and conditioning up and not necessarily being in the pool. People, um, our swimmers could definitely retain their strength and um, not necessarily maybe their aerobic capacity, but we did still do conditioning classes and stuff. Um, but it definitely, that strength 
strength that we kind of gained over lockdown definitely did transfer over to the pool. Um, but even just doing those Zoom sessions and getting them to use their pair bands and literally just mimic that like swimming, but they yeah. all had to do it online, definitely kept the community spirit. And um, so I think that's kind of how we retained them in ESB. Um, everyone still was excited to come on. We literally did it every single evening. Kept me and my brother um, interested, uh, not interested, but it kept us entertained as well because we were still technically taking our team um, for sport yeah. every evening, which was nice. Um, it was difficult, like I said, um, having that drop out, especially because they weren't in the pool and then maybe their priorities changed because of education and they're going into leaving search and they did notice a big drop off on their performance. We did notice mm-hmm. that we lost a good few of our senior swimmers, um, but doesn't necessarily mean that we've we've lost them to like, they haven't gone into the other sports. We actually had quite a few, um, particularly female athletes, they actually transferred over to different kinds of sports. So we had one girl, oh, yeah. she transferred over into long distance running because she got into running um, over lockdown and we still go to her. You don't hear that often of a, of a swimmer going running, do you? No, absolutely not, but we still go to her her events and we support her because she's doing incredible like she um mm-hmm. did really well there in the all ireland cross country finals too um and then we had other swimmers get in uh, one of our swimmers and um, she's now a coach as well in swimming but she transferred over to rowing so mm-hmm. she kind of used some of her strength that she gained in lockdown to transfer over to rowing so uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that we've lost our athletes it just means we've lost them in the pool but um we still yeah encourage them to keep their their sports up and what's it like now, like having everybody back in the pool? I'm sure there's loads of hunger and, and like want from the athletes to like there's an appreciation, I think, um, people are finding when they're able to get back into um into the sporting environment. Like, you know, swimming was one of the ones that, that was tough because um, you know, as a, as an indoor uh, sport, like definitely a less a less accessible one like basketball struggled with it, gymnastics struggled with it because it was indoors. Definitely. So I guess what's kind of like, I'm not going to say nice that, you know, some of our senior swimmers had left, but within the first year, we could really focus our attention kind of onto our juniors and our intermediates. And now because they are the athletes of our club, they have that kind of motivation. They're like, okay, we're mm-hmm. the ones that are leading the club now and their drive now to like improve every single session is actually amazing. So mm-hmm. and kind of having the younger crew come through and yes, it took us about a year to kind of get them back up to I guess the speed, the aerobic fitness that they had before COVID. Um, but now you can come down and you can see that kind of drive, that like enthusiasm, that mm-hmm. kind of competitive edge that they had before COVID is starting to kick back in, and um, which is a really exciting to see. And um, we also started to get up all our old records before COVID and we put them up onto the wall in ESV as well. And um, so we have obviously have like Ashlyn Cooney's old records, so our Olympian back in 2008. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of her records are up on the board. Um, so some of mine would be like the fly events. So I had, had the club record, I think for couple of the IM and the fly events and I had one girl come really close to me there on the, the ESB gala and I was like I was devastated that she actually didn't break my record to be honest I was like you're so close and she was so much younger than me as well so it's kind of nice that they have a visualization on the board mm-hmm. as well that they can like strive towards and just show to them as well it's like okay yes you've had two years out from COVID but you're still doing so well that you're like just underneath these records and like you can definitely smash them so mm-hmm. yeah that's kind of what we're doing with our club at the moment. Yeah, and that's like a that's like a really nice thing um as well to like have those goals. And like you're talking about like some of the role models that are in the club. Yeah. Um, you know, having having you gone through as a female role model, you having Ashling, um, I know she's not that much older, but but obviously someone a couple of years older that you would have looked up to at the time. Yeah. Um, how important is having uh, role models for you know for any athlete, but particularly for girls and women in sport? Um, I know I know swimming in particular, people can drop out as we talked about those kind of teenage years, but it can be particularly difficult sometimes to keep girls in sport. Absolutely. Um, I think, I know you're saying Ashton's not that much older than me, but like, my God, she was my biggest role model when it came to ESB. Um, like I got to train with her in early mornings. It was just me and her. And sometimes um, Claire and Gillian Gavigan would come down lo- along as well. That was kind of our relay team at the time. Um, and even just watching the way Ashton trained and her kick mm-hmm. in the water and her own underwaters and stuff like that, like every single day, I was like, I want to be like her. Um, so yeah, like it's extremely important to kind of have that role model. And then particularly when you're going through those more difficult years of going through puberty and that kind of thing, you do have kind of those older girls that you can come and chat to. And Bill McCarthy, our coach in the club, he was brilliant for organizing like mm-hmm. female coach, sorry, the older female athletes will take the younger female athletes uh, for a day and we'll either do like skills in the pool or we'll go off and do like a bonding session. So we'll do something mm-hmm. else. Or we'll also like have anonymous boxes where we ask questions to the older yeah, athletes. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily have to, they don't know who's asking the questions, but at least we're getting the information that we want um, and yeah. kind of like how did they find it going through like kind of puberty years and training and 
missing out on social events like you do in school and like not going to discos because you're training and that kind of thing um but having those people to turn to I think is really important um so it is nice that when you do have like say older athletes and I'm not just specifically talking about myself and um, that have kind of stayed in the sport not necessarily as an athlete but as a coach that you can still turn to those people as well I know the dynamic is a little bit different and the relationship is a little bit different um but seeing as we've come through and we've had that experience um we can then start to promote it with older female athletes to still do it with the younger athletes um so I do think it's extremely important to kind of have those role models yeah so like you obviously stayed on and on you swam in college um talk to us a little bit about that experience you know sometimes people can find you know going to college can be quite a change uh you know depending on the you know environment that they're in and um, staying involved in swimming or athletics or you know another sport they might find it tough like what would your advice be for people um if they are considering like if they're on the fence about it, like they're all like oh, I don't know if I should you know go and play Kamoe or I don't know if I should go down to the pool um you know how did you find it when you when you changed from um you know club swimming and, and being in secondary school then going to college um so for me it is a change it definitely is a change um particularly um like your training definitely increases say in swimming and um, so it'll be two hours of training in the morning could be an hour of gym at lunchtime and then again two hours of training in the evening mm-hmm. and then you've got lectures in between so it is quite intense and it's definitely something that like you you want to know that you like you want it basically and you want to be the athlete but I think I was quite lucky in the sense that um from ESB and in UCD as well uh, swimming can be quite a male dominated sport but I had quite a few female swimmers that I was um kind of partnered up with so again coming from ESB and having Ashton Cooney and the Gavigans mm-hmm. and the Gavigan sisters um and other female athletes and then transferring over to UCD UCD we actually only had one male on the first team so it was all females and then one male um so I had Ashton transfer over with me as well um again you're talking about role models and I know Ashton wasn't older than me but I've actually got Sean O'Brien who's a little bit younger than me and she was definitely a role model to me too because she was always that little bit faster than me in in the fly um but we became um really good friends just from we actually did the same course together so we did food science together and we did um we did swimming together as well so mm. to be honest I, I've looked back on it now and I'm like if I didn't have Sean to be honest might have dropped out a little bit sooner because mm-hmm. if we had the two of us like doing the course at the same time so we had the same lab times we had the same lecture times and then mm-hmm. we also had the same swimming times and um, so that was a really really big help for me I wouldn't suggest like anyone should drop their sport if they're going into university and um, like you have your sports expo days I think you should go and you should sign up for your sport or whatever sport that you're interested in and just give it a go and like don't don't quit after week one don't quit after week mm-hmm. two it's always going to be a change even just I don't know change in timetable change in like you know jumping into lectures I guess tr- being treated like an adult for the first time probably when, like coming from school and coming up into college and you have to take care of yourself that's a big change as well so I would say stick it out for like four weeks six weeks and if it's definitely is something that you want to keep up then I would recommend it because at the end of the day like my club in UCD they were my family like they're the people that you spend most amount of time with they're the people that see you through your worst they're the people that you know you go through all your emotions with and stuff and to be honest I wouldn't change that for the world like that was mm. my best university experience I know you get to party and I know you get to socialize but to be honest like my best memories are from swimming in UCD to be honest yeah and there are a lot of the friends that you've retained Absolutely. Um, like Sean O'Brien is coming home from Amsterdam this weekend and I'm very excited. Um, so yeah, like again, they are, they are my family. Um, like you have the likes of say Michael McCarthy, he's a coach as well. So he's stuck with swimming too. Um, so he's coaching now with Limerick and Kilkenny and he's still a very close friend. Um, and then also like loads of other friends um, still kind of have stuck with swimming in some way. Um, so it definitely seems to be a sport where the passion never diminishes basically like you'll always stick with the sport somehow um, and then even being announced as the commentator for Irish Workers Nationals I think every swimmer that I possibly swam with contacted me on Instagram um, which is really nice because again it kind of shows that community feel um, in swimming mm-hmm. so yeah. Yeah you obviously took a um, you know you stayed in in the the competitive aspect um, of swimming and I know UCD is one of the one of the colleges that does offer that it's not necessarily the same in every um, college around the country but they do usually offer a swim club but what yeah. you've talked about I suppose a lot is you know around community or in friendship yes you took the route of, of staying competitive which people have the option to do but there is also that social element I know obviously in UCD there is um you know there's a second team where you can you can swim more casually and, and yes you can compete if you want to um but then there's there's so many other sports that you can get involved from a from a social you know perspective whether it's you know tag rugby or and um, you know joining running like there's there's a lot of flexibility within um within running teams I think in in college or um 
like I, I think it's 55 clubs that UCD has and um, there's loads of opportunity in like AIT in Limerick and Galway and Cork like there's a lot of option but like a lot of what you're talking about is that friendship that community and yes you took the I suppose serious approach um, yeah. and maybe did have to continue giving up a couple of nights out but you managed to get the balance in there as well I think yeah um but to, like talk to us about that like you know you're you're talking about you know some of the friendships that you have you still have um, and getting you through college and, and and that whole experience definitely so um yeah like uh, obviously there there was the whole competitive side and mm-hmm. yes there's up and down days with the competitive side of swimming um like I said before the training is very intense and um, sometimes you can feel like you've just gotten to the point where you're a little bit overtrained and you just need a week off and you don't want to yeah. see anyone that you swam with or anything like that and like it was I I was on scholarship in UCD so even the financial side of things um it was a little bit easier you know kind of transferring over to that competitive side and um, but like you said we had the second team there as well which it's not that we you know didn't interact with the second team we still had our social events with the second team too so the second team were basically um swimmers or maybe ex-swimmers or people that like were in competitive swimming want to keep up swimming um but might not necessarily want to compete as much because they I don't know have either a busy busier schedule they want to try out different sports in college too and um, so it was a great way for them to stay in swimming they still did some competitions in the year so we had varsities and we had interpros as well and um, which was yeah like it was a really nice way for like kind of the the first team and the second team to mingle I don't really like calling it the first team and the second team anymore I feel like that's very like I don't know there's like a diversion between the two of us but no there's not <laughs> um, but it's actually what yeah, did you like, call it when you were captain India <laughs> Oh God, what should I call it? I have no idea. <laughs> like, us from them. No, I'm only messing. <laughs> um, hey, I was part of the them. <laughs> um, but no, like, it, like, again, like I said, what I kind of took from even competitive swimming in UCD was more the community side of things, the friendship side of things. I obviously took some, like, great experience, I guess, as well. Um, like, I was team captain for two years in a row. Yeah. And kind of having you learn that. a lot you learn a lot in a position like that being on a committee and, and working together and they're things that you take on into life like after and um, after you've left your sport yeah definitely so like kind of just learning like I guess like leadership skills and some management skills mm-hmm. as well and like also having to like go off to, to different banks and try and get grants for the, the team and that mm-hmm. kind of thing so like definitely like some amazing life skills were taught just from being on a committee in a club and that doesn't have to be a competitive side of the club like you can yeah. be part of the committee from like any sports team within UCD like I joined different sports teams in my final year of college so I left swimming um, at the end of third year of college and um, due to a shoulder injury which is like an unfortunate way to leave but there was other sports that I can get involved in um, and that was nice that was really nice to explore and um, uh, having all those kind of like different sports and something I don't know I just remember walking into the sports expo and I think I signed my name up to like 13 different sports now I know I just <laughs> all 13, but I was kind of like oh my god I'm not I'm like, sure I, Earl was thrilled he was really like what is thrilled. she doing now like, she, just, she just left me because of a shoulder injury and now she's taken up like archery or something and I'm like no, no, just giving it a go and um, but that's the amazing thing about college and about university and kind of staying within sports until that age as well is because there's so many different avenues that you can go down mm-hmm. like if if the sport that you're in now is not for you and you've decided that that's perfectly fine but there's so many different avenues that you can go into and again like getting onto committees and meeting new mm-hmm. people and you might actually find that like yes you might have had a passion for six or seven years in one sport and um, but you could transfer over and literally excel in another sport and you like if you yeah. hadn't gone to university and gone to the sports expo and tried that you're never going to know so I definitely would suggest kind of just obviously you can stick with your own sport but if you are kind of deciding that you want to leave it um, I would definitely recommend going up and trying something else as well. Yeah, no, I think it is about like finding the balance, like what's right. Like, you know, as you said, it, it is it is a change. And, and you know, for you, like, um, you know, you lived in Dublin and moved to a college in Dublin, but other people like they might have moved, you know, from Cork up to Dublin. And, and that obviously like can, can be such a change as well as, you know, maybe being on the fence. But, you know, we're like stay involved in a competitive sport or, you know, take a social approach. And, and you know, people can take a year off and then they can try something new. Like there, there is so many options. But I think like what you're saying, um, like I totally agree with where it's, you know get involved from some perspective like if you want to be elite go for it but if you want to take yeah. a break for you like that's totally fine and Absolutely. I know um what while, while we're talking about uh you know UCD like Emer Lam would have taken a year off um off rowing and, and would have gone to Germany for Erasmus and um you know she came back and and you know returned to rowing and, and has a you know Olympic bronze medal so like it, there are things that you can kind of take a step back for a period of time if, if that's something that suits you and then go and be competitive again um 
there's a statistic, it's 94% of uh, women in executive managerial uh, positions have a background in sport. Mm -hmm. So there's like a huge value in being involved. I think like you mentioned, like, um, you know, you've said that you can talk for Ireland, but then you also have that experience as, you know, being a captain, being a leader. Like, are they things that you think that sport taught you? Obviously, you kind of like growing up, you get like your morals and your stuff from your parents. But I kind of felt from competitive swimming and like even just swimming in general, sport in general, my life skills came from my sport, basically. So kind of, I guess, like time management and um, like being on time for things, being disciplined um, and then taking up like the team captain role. So I was team captain mm-hmm. in ESB before I moved to UCD and then I was team captain in UCD as well. So um, kind of from quite a young age, I was taking on that I guess leadership role and so I would be talking to swimmers that could be a good bit older than me and like trying to I don't know keep a community spirit going keep like I don't know everyone enthusiastic about their training but also making sure that everyone is like disciplined themselves and they're Mm -hmm. they're turning up for training and they're giving training 100% because like I said before swimming is a very individual sport but you train as a team so you want everyone to come down and give their 100% effort so um I think from there like it taught me a lot of like kind of managerial skills it taught me a lot of leadership skills and it taught me to speak up to be honest because when I was growing up I definitely would have been shy like I'm not going to say I was like an introvert but like I definitely didn't have my voice heard as much kind of from the age of like 12 to 13 Um, and then getting into swimming and getting a little bit more competitive swimming and then being given that team captain role it just taught me to come out of myself and um, kind of gave me that confidence I guess now which Mm -hmm. I do transfer over to all of my jobs now so a lot of my jobs every single day I'm meeting new people I'm meeting new clients and like I said before I can talk for Ireland um and that was about the jobs just give people some context there what what has it what has your career uh, evolved into uh okay so I studied food science in college um so after food science um after four years of food science I transferred into food safety for 18 months and um, was definitely like a very good job um, and really good experience but it just it wasn't me like I said before like I was shy but then I started to come come out of myself and I like to interact with people basically so mm-hmm. I actually took a step back from food safety um, and I went off and I did my personal training course and um, so I ended up working in a gym for a year before I became a gym manager so I started and I managed a gym for about three years at the same time I was also um, a swimming coach as well and I'm also an operations and complaints manager at the Aviva Stadium which is a little side job too um, <laughs> and then after about three years of being a gym manager um, I went back so my passion from food science was always going to be human nutrition and um, I just didn't go straight into a master's didn't get straight back into study but at the start of COVID I decided it was time for me to go back into my education so I did a two-year master's in nutrition and um, which I just qualified there about a month ago and um, so now I'm starting I have my own online business in nutrition and personal training and um, I'm still a personal trainer and strength and conditioning coach and um, still a swimming coach and still working at the Aviva Stadium so busy girl um, but again kind of from those skills that I learned before all of my jobs have been some form of like managerial role leadership mm-hmm. role interacting with new clients um kind of sales as well I guess so like kind of selling myself as a person um but I wouldn't have been able to do that I don't feel if I hadn't gone through swimming gone through sports and yeah. um, learned all those skills beforehand like I definitely would be a completely different person and um, if I hadn't had to do that kind of in previous years yeah and like you were talking a good bit there about like teamwork and communication and all that kind of thing which is something yeah. like obviously you need um in some of the environments that you're in yeah. um but that you've learned over the years I think uh through swimming as well um yeah no I think that's all like some really really interesting points that you've mentioned um there as well and uh it's look what we're trying to do is just encourage people to to stay involved in sport like you've had a, a good experience um you know from a competitive perspective but you've also I suppose brought it over into your career as well um, we will be listing out for you uh, over the weekend, tuning into the live stream. Maybe we'll get down, but um, best of luck with the with the commentary. Uh, great to see that that you're that you're taking on the on the new challenge, and hopefully, yeah, uh, we'll see you doing a bit more of it over over the next couple of months. Amazing! Thank you very much. It was very nice to talk to you. And do text me if I'm talking too fast on that live stream. Let me know. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'd like to But thanks very much, Nibo. So we chat to you today as well. Brilliant. The Her Sports Show live every Wednesday on YouTube and every podcast app.